What's up everyone, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and these are the best features and important tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy J8. Now I'll be covering the best features first and after that I'll be talking about the tips and tricks. So if you're bored anywhere, just skip ahead. But make sure you check out the tips and tricks section. Now with all that said, the first best feature about this phone is definitely its display. This phone sports a 6-inch Super AMOLED display with HD plus resolution. I really wish Samsung could bump up the resolution, but even this resolution is okay or is manageable for regular usage like browsing, making calls or sending messages. If you like to play a lot of games, then you'll be a little disappointed. Now the next best feature on this phone would be the live focus mode. Now that's a different name for portrait mode on Samsung phones. This phone sports a dual camera setup with a 16 megapixel primary camera with f1.7 aperture and a 5 megapixel secondary camera with f1.9 aperture. And it does take some pretty good portrait shots. Now unlike other phones, we can change the amount of background blur effect we want before taking a picture and even after taking a picture, we can change the amount of blur effect and even the focus point. So that's a feature very few phones offer. Next we have portrait backdrop. Now using this feature, we can change the texture of the background. We can set it to crystal, pixel, time or crumbled. These are the sample shots. Next we have portrait dolly. Now once you take a portrait shot using this feature, you can make the background move backward and forward giving you a moving picture kind of an effect. I am personally not a fan, but you can give it a try. Now the next best feature is the background blur shape. Now if you have a portrait shot with some lights in the background, you can change the shape of those lights to hearts, stars, polygons and all these shapes. Next this phone has a dedicated SD card slot. Unlike many other phones, this phone has two SIM trays along with a dedicated SD card slot. So that's a unique thing. And with the dedicated SD card slot, you never have to worry about storage on this phone. Next, this phone supports native video calling. Now this is definitely not a huge deal, but this phone definitely offers you option to make and receive video calls directly from the stock phone dialer. There are still many phones out there which simply doesn't support this feature, while the Samsung does. Next, this phone even has space unlock feature. Now this is how you set it up. This phone also has a fingerprint scanner and it is pretty fast. And compared to that, face unlock is kinda slow and not very reliable. In good lighting conditions, it takes like a second or two. And in bad lighting conditions or low lighting conditions, it takes like few seconds. So on the whole, it's not very reliable and I would suggest you to use a fingerprint scanner instead. Now the next best feature on this phone is the secure folder. Now this feature has a simple name called secure folder but offers you a lot of things. For starters, you can hide files in it, you can create your secure notes, you can even drag and drop applications into this folder and use them as dual apps. And if you have any applications where security is a priority, let's say like net banking applications, so you can put all those applications in this secure folder and make them more secure. It is basically like a secure box inside your phone where you can hide files and keep applications safe. Now the next best feature on this phone would be the Bixby Vision. Now once you open the camera application and click the button on the left corner, it will open Samsung Mall and then open the camera application. Then you simply point at an object and take a picture. Now this phone or the Bixby Vision will scan the image and try to find that product for you. It is not very accurate, but it does work sometimes. Next, this phone has Dolby Atmos sound enhancement. You can enable it using the toggle or you can simply go to the sound settings and enable it manually. You have different profiles like movie, music, voice. Once you select a profile, it will change the audio for a better experience. You also have equalizer settings just below the Dolby Atmos settings. If you are an audiophile and want to change these equalizer settings, you can come here. Next, this phone even has themes. Now there are hundreds of themes to choose from, both paid and free. And I personally like this high contrast theme. It has a complete black theme and looks really good on an AMOLED display. If you have this phone, definitely give this theme a try. Now the next best feature on this phone are stickers. To use this feature, open the camera application, select the front facing camera, swipe and select stickers. Now you get all these different stickers to choose from. Once you select any one of these, you will see an overlay of these stickers on your face. And this is how they look. Next we have a feature called selfie focus, which is nothing but portrait selfies where the subject or the person in the frame is visible, where the background is completely blurred out. Edge detection isn't perfect, but it does a pretty good job. Next we have wide selfie. 
Now this phone comes with a wide angle lens for the front facing camera and it does take some wide angle selfies but if you want to take much wider selfies you can use this feature. It is just like the panorama mode for the front facing camera. It takes three pictures in different angles and stitches them to give you a bigger wide angle picture. Next we have auto call recording. To enable this feature open the phone dialer then go to settings and then select record calls. From here you can record all calls or specific calls and even enable to show notification once the call recording has been done. Next we have Samsung Pay Mini which is the mini version or the stripped down version of the Samsung Pay that you can find in Samsung flagships like the Samsung S8, S9 Plus and so on. It is more like a small application that links with your Mobiquick, Paytm, free charge accounts along with your bank accounts and helps you make some payments. I wouldn't recommend you using this app but you can check out the offers and the banners on the home page for some cashback offers. Next we have blue light filter. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters blue light which is supposed to help you sleep better at night. We can also change the intensity of the filter using the slider and we can also schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time. Next we have the option to change font. Usually most Android phones doesn't give you the option to change font while this phone does. Now you can choose any one of these fonts or if you're not satisfied, download more from their online library. Next we have easy mode. Now if this phone is going to be used by some elderly people, then you can enable easy mode for them. Once you enable this feature, everything on your phone will be enlarged. Your home launcher will change, all the icons will become bigger, font size will increase and it just makes the phone more readable for elder people. Next we have game launcher. Now once you enable this feature, it'll create a folder called game launcher on your home screen and keeps all the games in that folder. Now from this interface, you can change your performance mode. You can set it to normal performance or battery saver. Every time you play a game, your phone will automatically switch to that power profile. Besides that, we can also mute games. Now that's not all. Once you open a game, you can find an extra button on the navigation bar. Once you click it, you get additional options to take a screenshot to record the screen, lock the navigation bar and even lock the screen without turning it off. On the whole, it gives you a lot of cool features, especially while gaming. Next we have a feature called one handed mode. Now once you enable this feature and swipe up from the bottom left corner or right corner, screen size will shrink and your phone will become much more usable with a single hand. Once you are in this mode, you can click this small button to switch the screen left side or right side. Now if you don't like this gesture, you can select the second option and click the home button three times to use the phone in one handed mode. Next we have a fingerprint gesture to pull down the notification bar. Once you enable this feature, swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar and swipe it up to send it back. This is really a very handy feature. Next we have multi window shortcut. Now usually on all phones you can simply press and hold the recent apps button to open split screen mode. On this phone, we need to enable this particular toggle to use that feature. Simply enable it and press and hold the recent apps button to open the current application in split screen mode in the top window. After that you can select the secondary application. Once you open two applications in the split screen mode, you can click at the button at the center for extra options. You can click the first button to save the profile, second button to resize the window, third button to swipe the first and second application, fourth button to open the current application in a pop-up window, which I'll talk more about in a second. And finally, you can click the last button to close the current application. Next we have a feature called pop-up view which is very unique to Samsung phones. Once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down from the top left or top right corner and the current application will open in a floating window. I really never had any use for this particular feature but it might come in handy for some people. Now there are two options on the top. The leftmost option is to minimize that application and the second one is to maximize the application. Next we have palm swipe to capture. Now before I show you what this feature does, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. For that, simply press the volume down and power buttons both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. Now for some reason if you are not able to do that or want an easy way, you can enable this feature called palm swipe to capture. Once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe the display of your phone with your palm to take a screenshot. And this is how you need to do it. Sometimes it doesn't work, but most of the time, it works without any problems. Next we have smart alert. Once you enable this feature, every time you pick up your phone, your phone will vibrate if you have a missed call or a message. Next we have easy mute. Once you enable this feature, you can mute incoming calls and alarms by placing your hand over your phone or by turning your phone face down.
Next, we have swipe to call or send message. In the phone dialer, you can simply swipe left or right on the contact to make a call or send a message. It's not a great feature, but a very nice shortcut. Next, we have dual messenger, which is like dual apps for Samsung. Using this feature, you can have two Snapchat accounts, two Facebook accounts, or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Sadly, we can't use this feature for all the applications. Like if you want two Paytm accounts on the same phone, we can't do it with this feature. If you really want to do that, you can use the secure folder feature which I mentioned at the start. Now the final and probably the best feature is the maximum power saving mode. On previous Samsung phones, it was called as ultra power saving mode. Once you enable this mode, it will decrease the screen brightness, set speed limiter, restrict background network usage, limit the number of apps that you can use, and apply a dark theme. On the whole, it does all these things to improve the standby time of your phone. Now, even in this mode, you can still use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, watch videos, and do all the regular stuff. If you're on a very long journey, just enable this mode, and you will have a great battery life. So guys, those were the best features. Now let's look at some important tips and tricks. Now first, I'll show you how to enable the developer options on your Samsung J8. So for that, go to settings. Now once you're in settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and select about phone. From here, select software information. Now click the build number seven times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. And if you have set up a password, it lasts for the password. Just enter it and the developer options will be enabled. Now, if you go back to the settings, you'll find the developer options below about phone. Now select developer options, scroll all the way to the bottom and make sure you enable this option that says force activities to be resizable. Now split screen mode has been on Android for a very long time, but all the apps do not support that feature. So once you enable this toggle and restart the phone, you will be able to use all applications in the split screen mode. So this is something you should definitely do. Now let's have a quick recap about the split screen mode. Now over here, we can press and hold the recent apps button to open the current application in a split screen mode. You can select the secondary application from here or you can go home and then select the secondary application. So I'm just gonna go open Play Store and YouTube. Now this you might have already known, but there's a button at the center. If you click it, you get some additional options. Now the first option is to create a shortcut. Now once you select that, it'll create a shortcut for Play Store and YouTube. Now if you go to the home screen, you can see a shortcut over here. So once you click it, it'll immediately open Google Play Store and YouTube in the split screen mode. So that's a really handy feature. Now we have some other options, like if you select the second option, you can simply resize these windows. Next, if you select the third option, it'll swap the first application and second application. And the fourth option is to open the current application in a pop-up window, just like this. Now finally, the last option is to close the current application. So that was a quick recap about the split screen mode. Next, I'll show you how to tweak your navigation bar. For that, you need to go to settings, display settings, and then select navigation bar. So at the top, we have this toggle to hide the navigation bar. By default, it is disabled, but once you enable it, you will see this small bubble over here. Once you double tap this button over here, navigation bar will hide. So now you will have a much more immersive experience. On the home screen, you can see the navigation bar, but whenever you open any application, navigation bar hides automatically. It just gives you a much more immersive experience of using your phone. Now, if you don't want that, or if you want the navigation bar to be there all the time, once again, you can double tap the button and it will stick all the time. Now from here, if you want to change the color of the navigation bar, you can do it from here. Just select the color that you want and it will immediately reflect at the bottom. Now, if you're not comfortable with the setup, you want to change the button layout, you can select the last option and select this to keep the button on the left side and the reset apps button on the right side. I just like to go with this. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, once again, go to display settings, then select status bar. From here, enable this toggle. So if you enable it, you can see the battery percentage on the status bar. Now, if we go back, now for some reason, if you want to change your default launcher or the default browser on your phone, you need to go to settings, then select apps. From here, select menu, and then select default apps. Now from here, you can change your default browser. I like to go with Google Chrome. You can even change your calling app. If you have any third party phone dialer, you can set it there. You can change the default messaging app. And finally, even the default home launcher. So if you have installed any third party launcher like the Nova launcher, you can come here to set it as a default launcher. Now, if you go to the home screen, this is the camera application and there are some shortcuts over here. Now you can swipe on the shutter button left or right to zoom in and zoom out. So it is pretty handy. 
Next, we can even swipe the shutter button up like this to pull out another button. Now this is a floating shutter button and instead of clicking this button every time, you can even click this button to take a picture. Now this might come in really handy for taking selfies in landscape mode. Now if you don't like this button, you can once again swipe it down and it will go away. Now these are all the modes that your phone comes with right out of the box. And for some reason if you want to change the order of these modes or completely remove them, you can go to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and then select edit camera modes. Now from here you can either select rear camera or front camera. Now once you select an option, you get all these modes. So from here you can enable these modes or disable them or even rearrange them by simply dragging these icons. And once you do, you can simply go back and those results will be applied over here. Now this is your default launcher or the default home screen. Now when you go to the leftmost corner, you can find Bixby Home. Now this might be useful for some people, but usually it will slow down your phone. So it's better to completely disable it. Now to do that, you can do a pin gesture, swipe to the right side and disable this toggle. Now Bixby Home will be disabled. For a quick tip, if you're watching a video on YouTube and if you see these two black bars on either side, like this, you can do a pin gesture to go full screen. I think this is something you should definitely know. Now finally, if you see any app that's not using the full screen, for example book my show application, you can see this small bar at the bottom, tap here for full entry screen. Once you click that, the application will go full screen. For some reason if you're not able to see that option and the application is not going full screen, then simply go to settings, then select display settings. From here select full screen applications. Now scroll down and select the application that's not going full screen and enable this toggle. Now once you do that, application will go full screen and you will be able to use the entire screen. So guys, those were the best features and important tips and tricks for your Samsung J8. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and if you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It really helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.